everyone, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Parks and Tech. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. Uh, and uh, and there it is uh, on the uh, the front of the box. It's all uh, all folded up. Um, and I guess that's what uh, is, is really different. Um, well, there's a, a lot that's actually different uh, between this one and the other model, the Mobile 2. But um, I never actually had that. Uh, and I actually never had a gimbal um for your smartphone uh before as well uh, i have a gimbal uh for my action cameras uh, for the ones that don't have very good digital image stabilization um but uh you know i've never never had one for my phone before i uh, never really thought i i needed one um but as uh, the smartphone cameras are, are just getting better and better and better uh then that, that makes perfect sense uh, to release something like this and, and at such a great price point as well. Um, you know, even for the, uh, for the, for the combo, not, uh, not, not too expensive. Um, so it's, uh, you know, just, just over a hundred dollars, uh, for, uh, for the pack. So, uh, definitely, definitely something pretty cool. Uh, and I hope, uh, hope hopefully works really well. Uh, I did already, uh, unbox this. I wanted to take a look at it because it was, uh, something that, you know, I, I never really, really, played with before um, but inside the box of course you'll get uh, the actual uh, gimbal itself um, this just folds up and down um, to uh, uh, you know to give you that nice compact uh, feel and uh, this would go inside this case which this case again only comes with the uh, with the combo pack but uh, it is a really nice case it's got some Osmo DJI branding on there uh, but very nice material and uh, of course you got your silica gel uh, don't eat that and uh, this just fits um, right inside and uh, I did that wrong huh. there we go that's better so that just fits inside there and then this zips up and you're good to go um, one downside to the case, and I'm sure you've probably seen some other reviews of this, uh, maybe you haven't, I don't know, but this is really the only thing that you can fit in this case. Um, you can't fit, well, you could probably squeeze this bag in there, um, but you can't fit this uh, little tripod um, in there anywhere. Can't really make that work any, any which way. Uh, I'd rather them personally made the case a little bit bigger so that this could fit in there, along with maybe some other accessories like, uh, like a, uh, the charger or things like that. Um, it does come with a micro USB uh, cable for charging as well, so you can see that uh, you can see that port there. Um, and also on here, hidden in this little door, is uh, is a USB port uh, for charging, so you can actually plug in your smartphone while it's in the gimbal. Um, so this acts kind of like a portable power bank as well uh, for your phone, so that uh, you'll hopefully never miss the action. Okay, so again, um, to open this. This just opens up just like that. Um, we have uh, a couple different um, buttons here. Let's take a look at the take a look at the front. We have our battery indicator lights. Um, we have our um, recording button, so you can start and stop recording. Um, also, your photo button as well. Um, we have our our mode uh, button, which we can have it uh, turn into or have it uh, do some different modes. We'll be taking a look at that here once we power this thing on. Um, and here we can actually manually control the motors uh, in which way that the phone is looking without, you know, moving around like this. We can just use this to control, or if we have to do both simultaneously, we can. Um, so we have this uh, this little trigger on the back as well. Um, we have uh, some some zoom um, on the side as well. Of course, it's just a digital zoom, so we will, uh, you know, take a look at that as well. And of course, the higher quality your 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 camera on your phone is then the higher quality the the digital zoom will be but uh, it's pretty cool that they that they offer that um, this thing actually connects to the DJI Mimo app um, on your phone via Bluetooth um, and that's something that you definitely have to make sure you do um, for, for the very first time uh, whenever you do connect that to the Mimo app I mean of course you're gonna want to have the app on all the time with this um, and you, you'll be able to record and do all kinds of cool stuff through the app, but uh, you definitely want to make sure that this is uh, connected whenever the app, um, or whenever you, you first turn it on, because if you put your phone in and turn this on, um, it's just going to hang out there. Um, it's not going to do anything uh, at all. So uh, you're going to 
you're gonna definitely want to make sure that you connect, turn on Bluetooth on your phone and connect to the, uh, um, the Osmo Mobile 3. So uh, you can do that all through the, through the Mimo app. It's very, very simple. Um, it did require an update, at least mine did, I'm sure. You know, depending on when you get yours, you'll probably have to update it as well. So, but you know, you wanna make sure you get those, uh, those updates done anyhow. So we'll uh, just set that aside temporarily. Uh, we already kind of took a look at this, uh, this tripod. Um, it does have a quarter 20 screw on it. So this just screws into uh, the bottom of the gimbal. Apparently not as easy as I had hoped. <laughs> there we go. So there's that. Um, it also comes with um, a little uh, wrist strap as well uh, that you can you can use. Um, I won't be, but you could if you if you like that sort of thing. Um, it does come with a neat little carrying bag though too. So um, nice soft bag. Uh, even if you don't want to uh, use this bag, you could probably find another use for it. I'm sure. Um, but uh, you could keep it in. I mean, you keep the gimbal um, inside your your hard shell uh, bag, and then um, I don't think this fits inside here, but I could be wrong. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, I just thought maybe there'd be a way to fit that inside, plus the tripod um, as well, but it doesn't. So, oh well, it is what it is. So, but but nonetheless, pretty cool. So, um, like I said, I did turn this on already for the first time, um, but I will go on ahead and show you the uh, the best way to do this. And they say what you should do is hold the uh, the gimbal like this whenever you are putting your phone in. Uh, you can see from the little sticker here, it tells you to make sure your phone camera is facing to the left of the DJI um, logo there. So you see, it says DJI, make sure it's to the, to the left. Um, you're also gonna wanna make sure that you center your phone as much as possible um, in it. Uh, to just make sure that you get proper uh, the proper settings and so forth with uh, with the motors. Uh, so there it is uh, currently inside the the gimbal. Um, and to uh, to turn it on, you press once and then press and hold, and then um, it powers up. Um, it does automatically power up into uh, into portrait mode, um, as you can see there. But uh, um, you know you can actually change that. Uh, and that is to press the mode button uh, twice. So one, two, and there it is in uh, in landscape mode. And um, that's actually the way that uh, you know that's actually the way that I I prefer to uh, to to do that. So let's go on ahead and get the app here fired up. Okay, so going ahead here into my camera apps, um, go into the. Uh, DJI Mimo app, there it is, and it found my Osmo, um, my Osmo Mobile 3. So I'll tap in to get into that. Um, there it is. Of course, it sees the Osmo action as well, uh, but uh, it's currently being used. So okay, and uh, and there we are. So we currently have this on, um, and uh, and it's working. You know, keeping the uh, keeping the gimbal nice, uh, nice and steady. Okay, now to show you this little uh, this little trigger slider here and and how uh, how that works. Um, so I'm going to slide it over to the right, and of course it's turning over to the right. Uh, I will go on ahead and point it up, and that looks like as high as it can go. Turn it down, and that's as low as it goes down. So I will go on ahead and turn this back over. So that's kind of kind of neat, kind of creating um, you know some. Uh, it's kind of creating some some interesting shots. Um, it's cool. It shows you what everything is. So again, all the way over, and uh, that actually turns it actually turns a lot. I was uh, quite shocked by that. So that's neat. How far do we? Uh, it's cool. So then up to go up. And down to go down makes total sense. So cool. Okay, so say you're uh, so you say you're using this uh, little slider to control this, and uh, you know you get all messed up in terms of your your orientation. See. Uh, it's not obviously getting straight. You can um, use this back trigger. If you uh, click it twice, 
it automatically recenters for you. So uh, so that's that's pretty neat, neat little feature. Um, definitely good for uh, you know if you do end up getting uh, getting kind of kind of discombobulated uh, with this and not have it be be pointing straight. So so it's pretty neat. You can of course switch to switch to different modes. Okay, so uh, another little shortcut here. Um, of course, you can change your different modes and so forth on the screen, um, but if you just uh, tap the mode button once, um, it will switch to photo mode. Uh, and then, of course, if you tap it again uh, in photo mode, it'll switch back to uh, to video mode. Uh, so that's a that's a nice little shortcut, and that'll that'll definitely come uh, come in handy. So um, another uh, another little shortcut to point out uh, this back trigger. Uh, if you uh, tap it uh, three times, uh, it will actually change the camera. So one, two, three, and uh, it'll bring it to the front-facing camera. Uh, so that's a that's again a nice little nice little added uh, added bonus. I wonder if you can switch while still recording. So let's just try this out. So right now we're recording um, with the the front-facing camera. Um, so that's one, two, three. And uh, it won't let me change. One, two, three. Now it won't let me change while recording. So I guess uh, I guess you can't change it. One, two, three. There it is. So yeah, so it won't let you uh, record um, while you're recording. You won't be able to change the cameras. I thought I thought it'd be kind of neat if you could, and it would just stop the other one and then start this new one. But I guess it doesn't. So it is what it is. But uh, but that's still still pretty cool. So okay. So again, uh, looking at the uh, the the mode button. Um, press it twice and uh, it'll change its orientation for you. Uh, of course, again, as I said before, I like the landscape, so I'm going to leave it in landscape. Um, now, if you press that mode button three times, one, two, three, um, it actually puts uh, the gimbal uh, into standby mode. Um, you can see it, it changes the app as well on the uh, on the screen. If you uh, and it tells you to uh, press the trigger twice to resume, so it'll wake itself up. One, two, when the trigger, and uh, and there it is, uh, you know, right where you left off. So that's uh, that's pretty cool uh, if you're trying to maybe save some battery or something like that. Okay, so uh, so as I told you before, uh, this uh, little trigger on the side here um, is to zoom in and out. Uh, but again, of course, it is just uh, digital, but we're going to go on ahead and test that out. So we slide it up to zoom in. Um, and of course, this is going to have to do a lot with, uh, you know, the quality of your phone, um, you know, in terms of uh, what this is really going to look like or not look like, how far we can go in here. You can see it's starting to get a little, little pixelated there, but, uh, but not bad. So I'll go ahead and zoom back out to show you. And uh, that's the uh, that's the digital zoom function we got going on there. Pretty uh, pretty neat. Okay, so uh, this does have a couple different a uh, couple different features. Of course, it's got the uh, the hyperlapse, which everybody loves. Uh, you got time lapse, video, photo, um, panorama, and uh, and story mode, uh, which looks kind of interesting. So uh, so we do have that. Um, some different modes for you to uh, to play around with, and uh, I won't go on ahead into all those. Uh, um, into showing you all those modes here today, but um, we'll, we'll save that for uh, for another video. Um, but uh, but no, all, all in all, this thing is uh, is pretty cool. Um, I am really uh, uh, impressed with the uh, active track that this thing has on it. Um, I'm sure a lot of other people are too. This this thing is just <laughs> just really cool. Um, how uh, how that works. Um, all right, guys. So now I have put it into uh, face tracking mode. Um, so make sure uh, whatever face or whatever it is you want to track is in view um, on the phone through the app, uh, and then uh, press that back trigger button once, um, and it brings up a little box that uh, will will automatically detect faces, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And right now it is currently um, you know locked onto my face. You can see as I move over here, it's uh, it's following me around. And uh, even if I get uh, you know close, it uh, it still tilts up with me and um, doesn't really seem to uh, to lose me. Um, so I think that's uh, that's pretty darn cool. Now that might have been as far as it uh, it can go, but you can easily just walk around, walk and talk as much as you'd like, and um, it will it will track you. Uh, I think it's really cool. I mean, the tracking is is uh, that's excellent. Um, that is absolutely incredible to how uh, how far I can get away here if I hide my face and uh, it's still 
following me. It's hard for you to tell, I'm sure, but you can see it on the uh, see it on the video. And I tried to tried to fake it by getting in nice and close, and uh, oh, maybe it finally lost me. Let's see if it's still looking and if it'll pick me back up. No, it didn't. Okay, so yeah, you probably won't be getting that close anyway. Um, so let's let's just try this again. Hit the back trigger. There we go. And uh, now it it, uh, it caught back onto me again. And I didn't even have to be looking at the screen uh, to do that. I just was you know standing back here, and um, it was able to uh, to find me. So I think that that's uh, that's pretty neat. Wow, that tracking's unbelievable. I mean, like I said, it only really lost me whenever I got really close. I'm going to uh, turn my head away here so it can't see my face and uh, kind of walk this way. And uh, it's still still locked on. So I don't know if maybe it's, maybe it's not necessarily your face that it's tracking, but, you know, it knows a, a human head or, I don't know, something like that. Maybe it'll, uh, you know, work with uh, animals or, I don't know, maybe it works with a car. I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't tried that out, but this is really cool. Um, I'm really impressed with how that tracking works. Well done. All right, here, guys. We're gonna put it through a little, little bit of a, little bit of a stability test here. You can see me moving this around like crazy. So let's see if it will mess up. So far, so good. So this is just a, a standard walk. Again, just a, just a standard walk. See the dog's toys everywhere. Sure you can hear Grace barking in the background. Okay guys, so uh, let's just go on ahead and, and dive into some of the settings real fast here. So we'll, uh, we'll go into the three little dots. Um, up here uh, we can, um, you know, we can turn on or off our flash, adjust the white balance, turn off on or off the grid. Um, we can uh, change what this trigger does for active track. Um, so I like it on, if you press it once, it activates active track. So I, I'm gonna leave that on. Um, and then of course here's gesture control. Um, it says gesture control is unavailable when the zoom magnification is higher than three times or when the gimbal is in FPV mode. Um, so, but uh, but that's pretty cool uh, that you know you can kind of control the camera with with gestures. So that's pretty neat. Let's go into the gimbal settings real fast. Uh, up here we have the different uh, modes that we can we can put it in. So right now it is set to uh, follow mode. Um, it does move. Um, you know, as you can see with the gimbal, so if the gimbal's pointing down, the camera points down. If the gimbal points up, the gimbal points up. Uh, you can see it's very slow and cinematic. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's go into tilt locked. So we'll go on ahead and tap tilt locked. And what that does is that's going to lock the phone at its current angle, um, no matter which way the gimbal is pointing. So of course it can only go so far, but, um, see how it's keeping, it's not, it's not following as I'm tilting this up, this would have typically been pointed up this way. Um, so it's keeping that tilt angle locked. And then of course, I'm going to uh, just reset that. And then there's uh, there's FPV mode as well. Um, FPV mode, you can see, is a lot like the regular follow, but um, you can see as I move here, this moves, the gimbal motors move a lot quicker. So, uh, uh, you know, if you're trying to capture capture some action, I'm going to put that back into follow mode for now. Um, and then, of course, you can also just activate sport mode. Um, so this is really moving fast. You can see those gimbals are moving even faster than 
they were with uh, with FPV mode. So it's pretty cool. Um, so then we can really oh looks like we can really change some things here. Let's crank it up as high as it can go, and uh, that basically keeps up completely with my gestures. So there's really not much lag there, folks. So we'll, we'll move that back to normal and uh, turn off uh, sport mode as well. So uh, control stick speed uh, medium, so you can change the uh, change the speed of the uh, the control stick down there. We've got the control stick control direction, um, which right now is in free. I guess you can lock it into horizontal and vertical. Um, invert pan control, uh, invert vert control. Um, you can also change what the uh, what the mode button does there. Um, right now, it's uh, it's doing a switch to photo, um, switch between taking a photo and recording, and of course you have your gimbal auto calibration as well. So uh, that's they give you a lot of settings to kind of play with, and of course you'll have to uh, play around with it and figure out which one is going to uh, you know be be best for you and what's going to work um, the best for the type of shot that you're trying to get um, and for what uh, for what you're trying to capture. So. Um, so you'll definitely be able to uh, to catch on to that. Um, there isn't too much in terms of uh, instructions um, in the manual itself, so you, you'll kind of just have to play around with it. Or, of course, you're watching this video, so that's definitely a good start uh, as well. So that's uh, that's that's pretty cool. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, we we kind of went uh, pretty pretty in depth uh, with uh, with this uh, DJI Osmo Mobile Three, uh, and again, this is the uh, the combo pack uh, from uh, from DJI. Um, but uh, all in all, I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, I I never really thought I needed one for um, my phone until, uh, of course, I I had this. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the gimbals are pretty cool with uh, again with the action cameras. Um, but uh, I just never really thought of one for the phone. I mean, this is this is the Note 9. The Note 9 actually has uh, some uh, some stabilization built in uh, to it already, which which actually works pretty well. So, you know, I was quite uh, uh, quite pleased with this. Um, and for the price, you really can't beat it. So, um, I mean, if if you do any type of recording with your phone or even um, you know just just photos, which we all do, we all take those these types of shots. Um, then I, I would recommend picking one of these up. I, I think it's really cool. I think it's really handy uh, to have. Um, it, it is very easy to use. Uh, it takes a little bit of playing around with it, but I mean, seriously, once once you got the hang of it, um, man, you got the hang of it, and you're you're good. Um, of course, there are some other settings that you can adjust and play with. Uh, a lot of different modes that uh, that you can do. Um, so, uh, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to go on ahead and leave you with uh, with a couple um, a couple shots here uh, that I created. I'll, I'll, I'll show you um, a, a panorama shot, um, and then uh, I'll also show you a little hyperlapse uh, that I made as well. Uh, so, I, I thanks for watching, guys. I, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Stick around for a couple uh, little little sample shots here, and they are pretty pretty uh, pretty short. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Okay guys, sorry I had to interject here. I know I said I was done, but uh, I just put this in to do a panorama um, and I thought it was really cool and I thought, uh, you know, I showed you guys that picture, but I want to show you um, how it's made. Uh, so it just looks really cool. So uh, just the, the little things like this, uh, like this excite me. So uh, just let me have my fun. Um, so uh, put it in the pano, press the button. Look at that thing go. It's good. It's getting jacks in it. And then, uh, then it basically just stitches all those photos together. So that's uh, that's really cool. Takes a couple moments to generate it, of course, but uh, but there it is, and uh, it's basically just like a really cool wide-angle shot. Um, <laughs> that's really cool. All right, guys. Uh, so this time I am done. Uh, seriously, I hope you uh, enjoyed a couple of those uh, little sample shots, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you again for watching and sticking it out this long and listening to me ramble on and on about uh, some, some different uh, little things. So, all right, guys. We'll see you in the next one.